So boy, do we have a big show for you today. I want to give you, of course, more updates. Hopefully you're not sick of them yet, but more <laughs> updates on the front yard. We're really starting to make progress, even more progress, and I'm be so much progress that I'm beginning to see, I think, some light at the end of the tunnel. But then the tunnel continues into the backyard <laughs> because the backyard hasn't even been started yet. We're going to start talking, I think, a little bit about my design vision for the back area, the back living room, as I'm thinking of it. A lot of our friends came home from the greenhouse. I was so happy to see them and welcome them home. I'm going to show you how I've got some of them outside, how I'll be styling them, but also how I've styled some of them inside. And then I want to give a great big welcome to a new little friend of ours. At the other house, we had that concrete bunny. And here at the Storybook Cottage, I've got Frida the Frog. Oh, Frida. Frida the Frog has come to live and be um and and can you be a a, a guard frog I not mean, a guard dog absolutely. but a guard frog yeah. well on that note Stuart, what do you think let's get started let's do it. okay Stuart, there's nothing like the scent of good manure in the morning kind of get you started it's in the fresh. garden. I know, sure. I'm serious. I actually <laughs> like, like the smell of it. Okay, one of the questions I get most of all is what do I use for mulch? And one more time, I like to use this Happy Grow Landscapers Mix. I get it at Lowe's. It's just a little bit over $4 a bag. Some of you have said you can't find it. And my recommendation would be just to go to your Lowe's and ask them if they can get it for you. And another tip, is that both this landscaper mix and these pavers of which I am going to get more I just went online ordered them from my local Lowe's I got 40 bags of this landscapers mulch and then I I just had them put it on will call and I obviously can't fit 40 bags in dot of, <laughs> of conditioner in my tiny little Fiat um, so I had somebody go pick it up in their truck and all they had to do was already paid for. It was at will call. They just picked it up and they brought it back to me. So that was very easy. Another tip when you're spreading mulch is to slit it down the middle of the bag like this, because then when you dump it out, it doesn't get caught up in the corners. You can work from the corners out because all too often that mulch will get trapped in these little corners and it's hard to get it all out in one easy fail swoop like this. So I'm putting this down all over the garden and I cannot tell you how happy I am to finally be at this point. <laughs> and I'm gonna put it down about two to three inches thick and I'm going to show you another trick that I'm going to do. And some of this, I'll come back and thin out a little bit and spread it a little bit better. I could do this with the rake, but I just kind of always, I can't resist getting my hands in it. And I love the way fresh mulch smells. Now this has a consistency of kind of, almost like a fine pine. And I love it because when it gets rich, when it gets wet rather, it looks so rich and healthy. And it can really work like a sponge to trap in the moisture. And that is so important right now because Stuart, we need rain mm -hmm. so desperately. And I think it's the thing I am most concerned about right now is that we haven't had any rain. So I talked earlier about these stepping stones. You can see them here. I placed them a little too, too far apart. A little bit of a hop there you had to do. A little bit of a hop. <laughs> but I have spread these out farther than I will normally because I've got to get more of them. And when I get more of them, then my, the, the distance between steps won't be so distant. 
<laughs> they'll be much more close together. So I'm going to continue to do that all around the garden. Now you can see here how beautiful it looks. I don't know, Stuart, can they, do you think maybe they can see the contrast? Oh yeah, you can see between where, where, where the sprinkler has gotten it and where it's still oh, yeah. dry. I think so, yeah. And how beautiful it looks when it gets, when it gets moistened. Now these pavers and the inspiration for the pavers came because they used to be stepping stones that wound around to the back on the east side. And then you may recall, if you've been following me, that I incorporated some of them into... We did a whole loop there. The whole loop. That. <laughs> and you're, and you're standing the on the right. same stepping stone. But I incorporated them into <laughs> the border here on the south side with both brick and those pavers. And I love the way it looks. And I love, I love the, the cadence of that. And then by adding them as stepping stones throughout the garden, it repeats something that you see here. Now, these are gonna largely be obscured. As soon as everything grows up, you won't be able to, you'll barely be able to see them at all. Only I, the gardener, will know where the magic stepping stones are. And that likewise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to order a number of these online. They're $2.08 a piece. I will determine about how many I need as I work through the garden laying the mulch. And then I'll just order them online and I'll have somebody with a big old truck go and pick them up for me. Something else I wanted to show you, and I think $2.08 is relatively inexpensive for the Sounds utility right. they yeah. will give me in the garden. Now I could have used I could have used flagstone, I could have used different things, but that would probably be a little bit more expensive. And again, I'm not introducing another hardscaping design element. Now, after I get all of this mulch in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to broadcast, this may sound strange, but I'm going to broadcast some gravel, some pea gravel. And let me see if I've got what pea gravel I'm gonna be broadcasting over here. So here's some pea gravel, okay? And once I get my mulch in, in place, now I could do this beforehand, and I'm gonna do it about in a 50-50 ratio. I could mix it beforehand, but I don't have the gravel yet, and I wanna go ahead and get my mulch in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna broadcast the gravel when I get it over the mulch, and the reason being that number one, I like the way that looks, and I alluded to it earlier as my gravel mulch, and I think I created the impression that it was going to be mulch in its entirety and gravel, but no, it's going to be a mixture of this landscaping mix, and you can see here where I've already put some of it down. Here's a better example here, Stuart where I mixed it about 50-50, about 50% 50 gravel and about 50% of like that mulch. And it looks really pretty. Now, why do, I, why do I like that? First of all, I like the way this looks more than I like the way just the plain mulch looks. I have also found, anecdotally, anecdotally that I get a lot better germination for seeds that I sprinkle, and speaking of broadcasting, seeds that I broadcast or will allow go to seed when I have some gravel mixed in with it. I love calling it broadcasting. Broadcasting, yes. That, uh, that takes you back to your roots, broadcasting I, I roots. I have a degree in broadcasting. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> well, this is just, this is just another, another type of broadcasting. So I love the way that looks. I like the fact that the seeds, because I've got some Cleome, I have, uh, what else do I have? Some Verbena bernariensis, I have some white gone Frina, and that leads me to my question of the day. I'm going to be sowing some of that in these spaces and in the areas in between these perennials that I have planted. This is a purple, uh, a pink coneflower. 
But that leads me to my question of the day. So Stuart, we were noticing when we took the thumbnail for this video that when you stand down on the berm at the bottom of the terrace looking up how gorgeous this purple looks with that chartreuse yellow. You want me to go down there and of show the them? sunshine lagustrum. Sure, why not? Go down there and 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 well, show them. There's a new way that I go down there if you remember. Okay, you gotta one, snap me down two, there. Two, three. And here we are. <laughs> and look how beautiful this purple salvia looks with this sunshine lagustrum. So what is my question of the day, you ask? <laughs> That's a good question. And, and the question of the day is, should I continue with this color scheme for the summer? Is this kind of chartreuse yellow and this, and this purple? Obviously, <coughs> ooh, I think I just swallowed a gnat, Stuart. Hey, they're protein, right? But obviously, I'm going to have some pink in the pink coneflower <clears throat> and also in the pink apple blossom roses. This is, Where is that? a carpet rose. Where are they, you ask? Well, they're not here yet. <laughs> but they're going to be here. They're going to be here in clumps. And carpet roses are going to be here at the nexus of this border and this border here of brick and hugging kind of in another kind of uh, blooming mounded way these are going to be placed in threes <clears throat> along the south side of this border so it will almost give the appearance of them cascading down so i guess um I, th I think what I'm going to do is for additional annual color that I plant, and I don't plant a lot of it, I'm going to stick with, with the purple and the chartreuse, and then perennials will mostly be pink. Pink will largely be injected through the perennials. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, the other <laughs> thing that we did was I decided that I wanted to keep, obviously not all of it because of the roses and the boxwood, but I did want to keep a good bit of this turf here. So I've been digging out, because this was a pretty weedy area, I've been digging out the weeds on this hill, and I'll continue to do that. And then we put down some melorganite, which is a granular organic, the best of Milwaukee sewage. <laughs> um, <laughs> But it's like crack, co crack cocaine for your grass. Right, yeah. So I've sprinkled it all along here. And hopefully pretty soon these Bermuda runners are going to go crazy. And this will be filled in in short order. I am hoping. It, will, it would really like it if it had a little bit of rain to go along with it. Um, I get over here, Stuart, and I can't resist. I want to keep pulling weeds. I'm sure there's people watching. That are so I think you are. Well, there's people watching. So that I want you to careful. pull. That want you to pull the weeds. Pull the weeds. So, but this will be. This will then continue this look up and down the street. You can see that big mound of clay is where somebody's having an irrigation system put in. So it will continue this look, but it will nevertheless still have, I think, still have my signature look. Um, I caught a wind tunnel over there. It got windy on my mic. It got windy on Just your mic? It came around it, the corner there, where the wind was. Yeah, okay. <laughs> little, little wind tunnel. And then down here, we've done. I've done pretty much the same thing. I've top dressed it. There were some channels down here that we had to fill in. But you can see how great these runners of this Bermuda are starting to run over the bare spots. And then I have the donuts in place to water these trees because this section down here does not have irrigation. Okay, did I miss the donut episode? Uh, I don't think so. I think I think Kayla's guys put these donuts on do, 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 to do, keep do. these watered. I don't know, how, so how does it work? I'm curious. Okay, they fill it up right here with the hose. And then underneath here, I don't know if you can see. Oh, okay. There's there are little down. outlets, yes. And gravity does all the work. Gravity does the work, Look and it just slowly dispenses water over time. You'll often see these in parks and in public okay. spaces. New to me. Because again, this area for these oak trees, these are nuttle oaks, this does not have irrigation down here. I do, however, 
almost have a completed irrigation system. And my, 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 Stuart, I have to say, look <laughs> at how pretty that looks on the upper terrace. We'll take a moment. With the white and the purple and the yellow. I up. really love it. It's come along a little. It's come ah. along. Yeah, I, I, just a little. Just a little. Oh, Think Lord. back to when the front porch was still red. I'll tell you what, I'll put up a, I'll put up a picture. Put up a picture, but show back. what it looked yes. like before. To we, when the front porch was Linda still red, there was no social patio. Um, and then now. And then I have, because I wanted this Boxwood Village here. I may be repeating myself, but for you new subscribers, or those of you who are new to the channel, um, you'll note that Boxwood Balls, Boxwood Villages are part of my signature touch. And I wanted these box, this Boxwood Village to kind of spill down to these urns. And what also began to spill down and erode was lots of the dirt that they were planting, planted in. So we mulched them with this brick. And someone was asking me, am I too concerned that that brick will really heat up and give residual heat? Well, at a certain point, if I'm worried about, any, about heat and any kind of residual heat, I think reflecting back off of the sidewalk or the brick or any hard surfaces, then I basically couldn't, I could barely have anything in, in my garden because this is a southern facing exposure and there will be lots of reflected heat. But these boxwoods are all ones that I transplanted or brought from the other house. This guy is struggling a little bit, but I'm hoping it will come out of it. Though it didn't help this morning that I saw a dog come and pee on it. <laughs> that's, that's an issue. It's an issue. <laughs> so, um, so, that's, so that's that. You can see over here, that's just a few. The trenches are all, the irrigation trenches are all closed off on the east side, on the west side. They are still open. We've got just a few more lines to run and then we'll close that off and I'll start mulching and putting stepping stones through here and I will be thrilled. Now this is an experiment I think I alluded to earlier but I'm going to point it out again because I'm so happy to see. Look at all this new growth on these blueberries. Aren't they just, isn't that just fun? And there's some little blueberries on here. And this is coming up behind the candy butterfly blooming in purple. And some of these plants have been rather traumatized with all of the foot traffic through here, but we had to get them in the ground. Um, anyhow, I think this is gonna be pretty and I've got a little drift of these rabbit eye blueberries from Southern Living that kind of go through here. And I think when they flower and when they set berry, I think it's gonna be very sweet and part of that that elegant and edible uh, landscape that I like so much. Okay, speaking of, very berry. A number, a number of you. Well, you know what, Stuart? Let's take a little break, and then I'm gonna let's come back, and I want to talk about my new garden journal. So a lot of you asked about the garden journal I have coming out. I believe it will be out in December, but you know what? You can pre-order it now on Amazon. It's a five-year journal that is going to be a companion piece to my book. It's just gonna, it, I think the best thing I can say about it is it's so common sense. It will give you places to record all of the kinds of information that we like to record. So for example, I would take note of how many, uh, how many pavers that I bought at Lowe's and at what price point and when I bought them and when I, when I laid them down. Um, the source for my Happy Grow mix, what all of the plantings are and when I planted them. But what I love about it also is it, it's a nice keepsake. Not only a record of this new garden, but it'll be a nice keepsake for me to pass down to my boys. So be on the lookout for that. You can pre-order it now and just look 
just go to Amazon and put in Linda Vodder Garden Journal or just Linda Vodder Book and it will come up along with the Elegant and Edible Garden. And like I say, they match each other per perfectly stylistically. And I love the fact that it's gonna be illustrated with line drawings of things that are kind of iconic to my garden. So I'm, I'm excited about that. But I digress, Stuart. <laughs> Let's get back to the garden. And what has now? by just massive, overwhelming uh, input from you guys, we are now dubbing Lemon Lane or Linda's Lemon Lane or, or something to that effect. I love alliteration and I love the fact that you guys thought Lemony or Lemon Lane was also the appropriate name for this passage that will go all the way back and then lead around to the west side of the house. So now all of the stepping stones are in place. It just needs to be, it needs to be mulched. And then I'll be planting other little darlings amongst the Miss Lemon Abelia and the Lemon Lime Nandina. And by the way, if you guys were asking, I think recently my lows at 38th and May had a bunch of Southern Living plants, including White Wedding Hydrangea. Uh, so some of those that sometimes are a little bit harder to find, they've got right now. So I'll be adding more color to this. I'll be waiting for some spread and some coverage because right now the thing I like least is it looks cluttered and it looks very, very piecemeal. But that will change as everything begins to grow and spread. So that's kind of what's going on up here, Stuart. I think, let me see if there's anything. Oh, oh my goodness. I mentioned the other day that I got the window box or the window box liners. So these are metal liners. When they arrived, they were not drilled. But Stuart, if you can show the followers that now they are drilled at the bottom. And again, these kind of liners aren't inexpensive for a window box, but when you think that I had my last window box for probably 25, 30 years, <laughs> and the wood lasted that long without rotting, then you can see why they are such a, an important investment to make up front. It's that whole idea, you save money in the long run. You save money in the long run by doing, it, by doing it correctly. The, um, the guys are gonna come back on Monday to put the trim on it because there'll be another piece of trim on it and then I can start planting. And what I'm gonna do is they'll put a layer of gravel on the bottom to give me good drainage then I'll probably use lots of just garden debris that I've got lying around. Maybe some extra, I've got pots that have used potting soil in them that's not diseased or anything. Put that in here again to reduce the amount um, of expense in getting them filled. Then I'll put in new potting soil with some slow release fertilizer and then I'll get to plant them. And I need to start doing that soon as picking out my <laughs> seasonal color for what I want to put in here. I'm, I'm seeing lots of lantana, some euonymus and some tough plants. I had thought about putting this burning love Lakothia, or however you pronounce it in here, but I when hunk I a hunk of burning love, hunk a hunk of burning that's love. The but when I plant. but when I checked the tag again, and also I think one of you followers also maybe pointed it out. I think this is going to require a little bit more shade than it will get in this box. So I'm going to have to think about my thrillers, my fillers, and my spillers that will all come cascading out of this box. Some will be ever enduring and hopefully will last through the winter. And then I'll have winter interest in additional to really dramatic seasonal color. Now, speaking of winter interest, I had, and this will be a nice segue for us to go to the back, Stuart, but I had lots of small pots of boxwood that used to be on my boxwood theater, if you recall, from the other house, and they were getting too big and I wanted to put them in the ground. So I am just putting little dollops, little boxwood dollops 
in between all of these deciduous shrubs. So you'll see there's one, two, three boxwood dollops right there in between the agapanthus and the butterfly bush. And this will give me evergreen structure for the areas inside this grid, in addition to the boxwood struck or the evergreen structure that I'll have in the winter that will come from the edging and from, for example, some of the evergreens like the fire chief arborvita that I have out there. It may be that as winter approaches, I think, oh, I need to add a few more evergreens or something for winter interest, but I can easily do that while it's still in the early stages of growing together and, um, and becoming lush and full. You can see there's another one over there. And this was a way that I can, I could reuse, there's one there, that I could reuse some of the things that came back from the greenhouse or that were in my potted plants that I already had. Again, reducing the expense and giving me some more evergreen structure in the winter time. So Stuart, what do you say? You wanna to go to the back? I bet so. Let's do it. Okay, Stuart, come to the back. I hadn't been over here, so I'm sure they hadn't seen a lot. Oh, uh, down, yes, down. I've got a nice concrete pathway that comes down the west side of my house and into the back. Now, it is a mess back here. <laughs> a mess. There's just stuff everywhere. Linda hasn't been to my house. And that uh, really there's is. stuff everywhere. <laughs> But I did bring home a lot of my old friends. So look at my geraniums that are in sore, sore need of Familiar deadheading. Faces. Look, there's some olive trees back there. I've got, uh, this is some of my boxwood that I have showed you before. That one may or may not make it. Um, again, it's cool today. It's cool and breezy today, but it's really been not that, not that, <laughs> not that recently, which has me just so, so worried um, that we're going into a drought. So this is just all mayhem. This is just stuff that will find a place as I begin the landscaping in the backyard. We've got a Eugenia guy? topiary down. Uh oh. What is this um, funky looking guy right here? This funky looking right guy here. is is a snowflake oak leaf hydrangea oh. that I brought from the other house. Again, it was in my contract <laughs> that there were certain specimens I was gonna be taking. And this is one that I've had forever and I need to get this in the ground. It's gonna go on the east side over here. Um, snowflake goes with snowball. The, snowball, but then I just had you know, just other things. I've got my elephant bush, some my uh, pineapple guava, some of the little Miss Figgy, lots of um, lots of this dragon wing begonia. Some of which may or may not go in the front window box. Coming that way, got to get past. Here's the, another the beautiful Miss rosemary Figgy first. here. Yeah, and, and so you can see this is just okay, all. Hold on. You, you said some stuff. Let's yeah, yeah, here. dragon wing begonia. Okay. And I've got lots of hydrangeas that still need to get in the ground. And we did get some terras? Uh, we did get some terras. They're, they're probably hiding in the shade. <laughs> so I am going to, I promise, I am going to make sense. Hopefully you have faith in me that I can make sense out of some of I this. I got faith in you, Linda. You've got faith. Um, so our next major job, once the front is pretty much finished, in addition to doing a rain dance, Stuart, <laughs> is these steps are going to be rethought out because they're way too steep. They're not practical and I need to rethink them. And so this will be the next project that we've got going in the back. And then I have shared a little bit with you of my vision of, look at, look at this, look at this gorgeous Eugenia topiary. These will probably be moved to the front once all the chaos is over with, but boy, did they like being in the green. It looks really happy, yeah. <laughs> and these do not overwinter, but I've had these for 
five years now, six years, and it was weird for me, Stuart, because I drove by the old house, and typically these are positioned out front in the front yard, no. and I kept thinking, okay, something is missing, something <laughs> is missing, and then when these came back from the greenhouse, I thought, oh yeah, yep, that's, that's, that's what was missing, their statuesque presence in the front yard. So back here, um, I just have decided not, I've got so many projects going on indoors and out that I just decided to, up until now, not to waste a lot of energy on just rearranging all of this clutter. I've just decided to put my blinders on. And that's been pretty effective for me so far. <laughs> we did, again, if you are new, uh, please subscribe. Please like this video if you're finding it interesting seeing a garden started from scratch. Make sure to tell other people about it. But when we bought this house, there, there was none of, of this latticework paneling above it. And I just love the way it looks. It's one of my signature touches. And I love being able to look through it and into, into the back. So if you were looking where I'm looking right now, you could see that there's some beautiful iris in bloom. Oh, let me get closer. I don't know if you can get those. Oh, one one of them is blown down, but there's some beautiful, interesting color, purple slash rust iris. There they are. And then when I sometimes say, the garden will tell you what to do next from a design perspective, this is an example of what I mean. So the tree through here is a redbud tree and it was so beautiful when it was in bloom. It's still beautiful now. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to do another copycat of something similar that I did at my other house. How beautiful would it be if I have a redbud planted on the opposite side of my fence over good. here, maybe even one on the corner eastern red buds and then i will have that wall of purple in the spring and i think it'll be absolutely beautiful my jury is still out on a small greenhouse i've got so much research to do uh, but i am thinking about it one thing i know for sure that i'm going to do or that i'm going to postpone for now is I thought that I wanted basically a flagstone and gravel dining deck. And my table would be right in the center of this dining deck. And it would be like an egg lying on its side, a big oval that would lie on its side. And then the periphery outside that egg oval would all be flower beds. And I still see that egg. <laughs> <laughs> but what I think I'm going to do, because this has such a good stand of Bermuda back here, is for this season anyway, I'm going to leave all of this Bermuda in place. And my dining furniture is just going to be on top of it. And yes, it might make mowing a little bit difficult, but this will be a very small area to mow, so not overly challenging. And it will be a test. It will be an experiment. You always told me, yeah, before you had the turf at your old house you you you're the mower yeah oh yes yeah, oh yeah you oh, don't no, have somebody I did. else i mow. did all of my own you're mowing all of my own edging i wouldn't even let hudson <laughs> or, or my boys i was so particular i'm sure they were real um, mad about that too. that like, may or oh, may man. not be the case over over <laughs> here but but that's what i'm thinking now is i will have a green large egg-shaped throw rug in the middle this is where the dining uh, table will be and then around the periphery that's where I will have big blooming shrubs maybe a climbing rose or two and then over here Stuart it kind of looks like a junkyard right now I think a lot of people would like to have this junk here. have this junk it's great junk it's <laughs> great oh, a lot of it thrifted junk and this will get arranged because I'm thinking, at least for the short term, that this is where my geranium theater is going to be. And I will style that. Oh, the and theater. of course, I'll bring you guys along with me to kind of get this a little more attractive looking. But what I think I'm going to do here in this area is this area is where I'm going to have some raised beds, maybe some gray galvanized, watch your back, Stuart. Thank you. Gray galvanized <laughs> metal raised beds. Teamwork. Um, 
that I can grow some veggies. And of course, I'll stall them in what I think of as a Lindevater way, but they will be raised beds here. And, but they'll also be mobile so I can kind of decide what I want to do with them. That's my thinking right now. And then again, the periphery will just get all sorts of plants and things, depending on, so today, a number of you have commented, Linda, is it always windy there? <laughs> it looks that way, doesn't it? Well, it does look that way. And, um, but remember, Oklahoma is a windy state. That said, it is the talk of the town that it has been so windy this spring, especially windy this spring. And, and it is April. Yeah. So it's an especially windy time of year, but today at least it's cooled down, and I'm happy. For, and I'm happy for that. So that's that's kind of um, that's kind of my vision. And then a number of you also. This kind of equates back to the to the front. A number of you asked about why why didn't I put French doors in here to go from inside out from the great room out here. Well, number one, expense. It was extremely <laughs> expensive to do that. And then I also liked the, and then it would have also messed with, okay, so the steps and all of that and the expense of the steps, but also Hubs and I came up with what we think is a brilliant solution that we will love. And that is this will be transformed into casement windows this fall which will crank out, we'll be able to open them, they will look old, they will look the vintage of the house, and I, I think I'll really like that. And then, um, and then I still have this real estate over here, which I would not have if there were French doors with big steps coming down, I'll be able to have this real estate for gardening and for, I don't know, for some kind of vignette. For gardening. We need a little fire pit <laughs> out here, I need, um, this will be torn up. I need a surround for all of this utility stuff over here. And this will pretty much, this will pretty much be transformed. But I started to say earlier that a lot of that might be how, how quickly the back goes might be dependent on the weather. So if it looks like it's going to be a really, really brutal summer, um, Ooh, I'm, I'm running out of that window of time. You know, in Oklahoma, there's only two seasons. There's before the heat and there's after the heat. And we're running out of time in that season before the heat. So I think that, I think that this year, it's the weather that's going to dictate whether or not this garden begins to go in in the spring or in the fall. I can certainly work on bed lines. I can work on these steps. I can work on infrastructure. But in terms of doing a lot of planting, I, that, that may be delayed until fall. So it's, does that make any sense, Stuart? It makes sense. It's a little sad, but it makes sense. It, it makes a little sense. Again, it will depend on the weather, but, <laughs> but it'll be so fun to plan. And I'll have more than enough to keep me busy in, in the front at the cottage on the hill. The process Stu will be fun. The process will be fun. Stuart, we haven't been inside for a while, and I will be doing more updates inside later. But let's, uh, you want to close out just, yeah. with, um, just with a little glimpse into how some of these plants are being styled inside? Yeah, let's Okay, do it. let's do it. Stuart, before we go inside, I want to show a, an interesting little tidbit. Now, this is why I love you guys so much. So, I found this piece of china. Can you that was, say somebody matched this? Yes. <laughs> somebody on Instagram <laughs> sent me a picture. Let's put it up here, Stuart. Okay. Because they said, I think that that is this china. And I just, I am just slayed at the, the ingenuity and resourcefulness of all of you and how you are motivated to track that stuff down. And it's so dear of you then to share it with me. You guys are just, are just the best. And I, I appreciate the heck out of it. Okay, now let's go inside, Stuart. Well, I...
always look forward to my plants coming back from the greenhouse in the spring and I especially miss while they're gone the presence of my beloved olive trees. I have small ones like this one it's just a tabletop version. I think I got this one at Trader Joe's but you know Stuart I saw them recently at Home Depot. So they are available this time of year. I absolutely I, I just love, love them in small form like this as tabletops but also in larger form like this one. I have two of these and I this has been overwintering in the greenhouse. I brought it back and I think it's going to do really well even inside over the summer because this is such a bright corner. It looks good over there. And it's in a faux concrete pot that just perfectly filled in and slipped into this basket that I got at a thrift store for $10. And by the way, I saw a similar one to this at an antique store the other day and it was 65. So I really, <laughs> I really feel like I got a good deal on that, but I love the way it fills the corner and I love the way it's repeated over here in front of the diamond windows. Now, a couple of other styling zhuzhes that I made to this area. I, as I've lived in this house, for a little bit longer now. We moved here at the end of December. I'm getting more practical ideas about how to use the space. And that informs me and about small things and large things. But one of the small things was I realized that I really wanted a purse and a hat rack I right need one here. Of these. And I liked Man, I could use you this. You could use that. And it's so practical. If you have a dog leash or something, you could hang it yeah, there right by the front door. But I also like it because it's in this buff brass look and it looks kind Kind of like jewelry underneath the painting and some of my favorite hats that I like to wear I can just hang right here put them on as I'm walking out the door you guys saw me wear this one the other day my dog would love the idea of a leash hanging there I bet she, and would she get would just, uh, she would get frisky every time you got in there yes. <laughs> and then this is one of my my lattice work plant stands or or plant cages rather I call them gilded lily cages when they first came out that I got off of QVC I can't remember if they're still available or not because um, this is where my my husband can keep he, he's got some of those walking sticks those portable walking sticks so when he goes hiking and things like that where the ground is uneven at any rate we can keep them right there by the door very very handy and then I decided also that as much as I loved this area in the winter time and basking in that southern sun, I nevertheless wanted to springify <laughs> for both the warm weather, summer, and so I changed out. I had some velvet pillows here before and I changed them out for some of these great uh, plaid linen ones. I got these at Mockingbird Banner and they look a little bit more summery and then I accentuated it with some blue things and nothing is more wonderful than blue hyacinths. I got these at Trader Joe's and I'm again I'm, I'm no spokesperson for Trader Joe's. It just <laughs> happens to be the store where I can get the most kind of things in the shortest amount of time because I don't like to shop. Something else that I got Oh my goodness, Stuart. Oh, these mocha covered Ooh. almonds. You may have to have one. They are not only delicious. <laughs> Probably but, shouldn't chew on them. But, but, uh, yeah, okay. but they're but they're very healthy and it just kind of transformed this corner into a little cozy space. I had someone over the other day, and you, in fact you may remember um, Chelsea. She was the one that just walked up to the other house and she ended up being in one of our videos. She's getting ready to move to Germany. Hi, Chelsea. And she came over the other day to tell me about her plans and we had tea sitting right here and it was just so pleasant. And it always is more pleasant when you have a few goodies. And then this is some of the Veronica that I cut back that I am hoping will take root so I can spread it around. But even if it doesn't, it is just another punctuation point of green on this table and I love that and then I decided that even though even though I had this statuesque olive tree here in the corner looks 
looks very Giannetti home if you follow velvet <laughs> and linen. I nevertheless, I wanted a little bit more greenery, so I just put a fern here on one of these campaign tables that I bought online, and undoubtedly people will want to know the link to this, Stuart, so we'll put it in the description box below. <coughs> Excuse me, and by all means, if we forget, which I seldom do, to put the, descript the link in the description box, please just let us know in the comments and I will add it a little bit later or add it in the community tab. Um, we, these are things that we really have to remember to do because we don't have a huge staff of support staff. We're shooting this on the fly, you Surrounding us. Speaking of fly, this is another way we know <laughs> that gardening season is here because look at the size of that fly. It's frank. How did it not, how did it not freeze out? <laughs> you guys, you get nothing if not the real world on this channel. <laughs> so on that note, Stuart, I think we're going to wrap up this show. Thank you guys so much for hanging in there with us. Lots more updates coming this week. We're going to be a little bit later in the week. I'm hoping to be back in the kitchen and a little bit more interior design updates. But for now, what do you say, Stuart? My mouth is full, so I can't say much. So you can't talk, okay? <laughs> then for both of us, bye-bye. Thanks for hanging in there with us, and until next time.